back, back. back. Hi, everybody. I'm Paul, and this is Mark Quigley. Mark's our art director. We've been friends here for 20, how many years? 30. 30 years? 25? I was thinking 25, 30 years. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. He's our art director. And what we are in is the archives room. These are all old guitars from that we bought back over a long period of time, kept some of them. And we're going to start going through the archives. And today we're going to go through the very first two electric guitars that I made. We're going to grab, it says Paul's first electric guitar and second guitar, right? These weren't the cases that they right. came, well, there was no such thing as PRS at this point, so there wouldn't be PRS cases, right? There's an instrument in here that we won't show that I didn't make the neck. I bolted the neck on. Have you seen that thing? I have seen that. Yeah, what do you think of that? It looks like um, something you did when you were 16 <laughs> with a pen knife. That's not good. It's so bad we won't show it. All right, so here we go. So there's some history around these guitars. This is the one I made at St. Mary's College for the art independent study independent project. Study project. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So this is a single cutaway neck joint. The neck does not extend beyond the end of the fretboard, and there's a little one on there. And um, you know, I didn't have a router at the time, so these little holes were cut out with a chisel that we made for that size. Oh yeah. Did you have to grind it down? Yeah, we had to grind yeah. it down with a grinder and um, I actually got the truss rod in right. Originally it had a single pickup and I sold it to the guitar player in the Nighthawks, Jimmy Thackeray. And then it ended up with another really good guitar player named Marty Bauman and Marty ended up putting other pickups in it. I mean, the neck shape's not bad. It doesn't have side dots, I mean, you know. Yeah, I would have a hard time with that. Yeah, with that well. I think at one but point, you know, people had drilled little holes in it and put, you know, nail polish on it or whatever yeah, they you could can do. Yeah, you can see leftovers from that. Leftovers from that. This finish is DuPont Duco Nitro that, you know, they used to use in the old days for cars and refrigerators and all that kind of stuff. So you got this wood from a violin maker? I got the body wood and the neck wood from a violin maker, a guy named Joe Wallow from Weaver's Violin. He sold me the fretboard and the body wood. It wasn't cut out, the mm -hmm. neck wood wasn't cut out. I showed this bag, like this gym bag of wood to the guitar teacher at St. Mary's College and he said, well, if you can turn that bag of wood into a guitar, I'll get you four credits. So, so the head of the music department said that the, the guitar teacher would grade it. Yeah. And I still have that... Um, independent study document. I mean, you guys can take a picture of you want to show everybody. This is my St. Mary's College independent study contract. It's called a learning contract. Now, it's been on my wall so long, it's completely faded. But basically, who's the student and who's the instructor and you know who's going to sign off on it and what's the method you're going to make the guitar by and what's the course description and da-da-da, it was all on there. I suppose I could get it under a really bright light and I could make it all come to life again, but that was the original contract for me to get four credits. Now, you had been doing repairs for a while Long at this time. point. Yeah. So what, were there any lessons that you learned from fixing other oh, guitars that God, went into yes. this? I'm sure. Well, the frets had to be in the right place. I knew how yeah. to put a truss rod in because I had done a repair for, of all bands for Aerosmith. Steven Tyler, they had broken, thrown the old Les Paul Jr. up and the headstock came down and broke off and Steven Tyler had grabbed the bridge because the headstock was off and the strings and the whole thing and he whipped it around here and threw it into the audience and they had a guitar without a headstock and so in order to do the repair I had to take the truss rod out because I didn't have one. Right. I had the old neck and make him a new neck. Mm. And Danny Gatton, bless his heart, let me do that repair. He called me up he says, I got a repair here for you, Paul. So this probably does not have the double acting truss rod it was before that no, right it's, it's an so, old gibson rod okay how, how long before that came to be the double acting truss rod we started doing that in the factory a couple of years in yeah you know 1987 88 something like that i mean the original idea was that the neck was only going to bend this way because of the string tension then the idea of it bending backwards that wasn't even a thought Although a lot of the old Firebirds and stuff used to do that, as right. 
Ted McCarty said we never made a good guitar in the fall and the spring because if for him the humidity was changing and the necks were bending. You know, but we put in a double action rod now so that if the thing goes backwards or forwards, you can adjust it any way you want. Right. But you know, I never really thought it was a good idea to have the truss rod encased in a plastic tube because it deadened the neck and all that other stuff. But if you're gonna, you know, if you're a guitar maker, you're gonna do a cover tune, this is a good way to do it, right? Sure. All right, so then we did the second guitar, and the idea here was, well, I've done a single cutaway neck joint, let's do a double cutaway neck joint, right? So it's basically the same thing, but with the neck coming in below the pickguard. Now when I made this right. guitar, I didn't put a pickguard on it. The headstock wasn't black. It didn't have um, that thing on it. Um, somebody broke the neck out of it yeah, and well. repaired it, which I didn't do. And somebody had put duct tape on the back of it. But it's the same neck shape. I mean, I had that part down. Yeah, that's a good neck shape. Yeah, it's not bad. It's kind of, it's big, but I like it. Well, yeah, but that's where they were. That's where they were in, that, in those yeah. times, right? So this was, okay, so now I know how to put the frets in. Now I know how to make a neck and get, get the truss rod to work. Now I know how to do a uh, double cutaway neck joint. Now I know how to make the intonate, put the bridge in the right place, get the frets in the right place, get the curvature of the fretboard, cut a nut, put the tuning pegs on, you know, make the guitar work, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And, you know, you got to do things in baby steps. you got to kind of slowly move along. But that was the second one. Right. And that guitar ended up, I gave it to Derek St. Holmes, who was singing in Nugent's band at the time. And I remember going to the Capitol Center, which was our huge venue, and looking up at the screen and him playing it. And I'd never even seen a Jumbotron, much less one of my guitars on it. And I'm standing there by myself watching that. Going, oh, that must have oh been amazing. Oh, my God. That was so cool. And I asked him afterwards, I said, what's it like to sing on a 30,000-watt PA system? He says, it's unbelievable. 30,000 watts is nothing now. Yeah. I mean, at the time, that was a lot of wattage, right? But um, uh, it was, uh, it, I traded it back with Howard Lease. Howard Lease got a guitar for his daughter, Bonnie, and he, tr he had bought it at a store, and I got it back and made him a guitar, and on Bonnie's 16th birthday, Howard gave him the guitar. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we've had this back a long time. This was the beginning of getting all the archives back. I think Howard did me a favor. I mean, you know. Sure. There's some guitars in here that Neil Sean got us back from the early days. Like the double neck? Yeah, well, some of that stuff. And I, he said, well, I said, why? He said, well, I think they belong in your archives, which I thought was really sweet. Yeah, it's great to have yeah. this stuff. So, I mean, look, if you're going to be a guitar maker, first do what you see before you do something new, right? Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's what the way everybody is. learns. That's the way everybody learns. It's like being, you know, the first tune I learned on a guitar was Proud Mary, right? And I was the bass player in a band. Do, 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 or whatever. So what are we going to call this thing? From the archives. From the archives. All right, so here we go. Mm -hmm. 